Tilo, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. Well, by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. As you can see right behind me, man, a little warning screen. Never know what's going to happen on this show, especially season five. Uh, don't forget, we do got Patreon. We post five days a week, things that can't go on here. And we also got... Twitch.com. Usernames at the bottom of the screen, man. This campaign will take it away. Season 5, episode 7? Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. I knew this. Man, just start. Mm -hmm. there you go. Recent research shows that low wages coupled with rising prices could leave more families struggling with debt this year than at any other point over the last decade. Obviously. With households now borrowing more and saving less, debt levels are reaching new highs. Over 600,000 families in England and Wales spend more on repaying debts than on food. Wow. Not that one town in Wales, the most unhealthy, am I? Come talk to me. High Court Enforcement Agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Rosendale, Lancashire. With a writ Lancashire. to recover more than four and a half thousand pounds owed to a shipping company by car parts dealer Scott Greenwood. How much are we going to collect? Four thousand six hundred and fifty-one pounds. They got a good team out here. This would get, might get crazy. No rookies to start. If Scott can't or won't pay today, we'll take the away. agents can seize goods, including vehicles, to cover the debt. Hiya, uh, my name is Victor, I'm an enforcement agent. Um, we're after Mr. Scott Greenwood. I'm sorry, he doesn't live here. He doesn't live here? Uh, are you related to him? I'm his ex-wife, yeah. Come in, please. Right, we, we've got it down that he does live here, so have you got any documentation to prove otherwise? No, because he's not been not living here that long. It says rented accommodation. Yeah. You yeah. got a rental agreement. I have somewhere, yeah, but I'm not sure where. Are we able to get contact just so we can give him a quick call? Yeah. Brilliant. No, no problem at all. While the woman Kelly goes to call Scott, the agents take a look around the property. You'll see all that there. Yeah. What's back there? As well as several packages that could be connected mm. to Scott's car parts business. There's a work van parked mm. on the street. Stuart takes it's looking like Scott's working there. It's a closer look. Is this a real life? People in the UK just be leaving their cars open? Like, this not the first time I've seen this. Bro just open the back door, like, with all his supplies in there. Like, you're not worried about nothing? No. Jet wash, air compressor, car parts. You know what I'm saying? Jet power washer, air compressor. You don't think nobody would take that? But then Vic spots something on the dashboard. Stuart. Yeah. Scott, received with his name on it. So that's his. Brilliant. The car parts and the receipt indicate that Scott owns the van. With evidence mounting that he does in fact live here, Stuart talks to Kelly again. So who is it that owns the van? The van belongs to a lad called Cordy. Right, OK. Because there's receipts in there with Scott's name on it. Scott's name on it. Right, yeah, because he has been using it, that's why. Yeah, right, right. 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 Does he live here or doesn't he live here, honestly? He doesn't live here, no. I want to say she looked like she lied. But I, I feel like her purple face is, is not good. You know what I'm saying? It looked like she's trying her hardest not to smile. Despite her claims, Kelly hasn't provided any proof that Scott has moved out. 
the van won't cover the £4,500 debt. But as the agents have a duty to try and enforce the writ, they turn their attention to the Fiat on the driveway. This vehicle will go unless payment is made. You can't remove my car, that's mine. Or I need to see documentation for Have it. you got proof that it's yours? No, because the logbook hasn't come back to it yet, but the insurance is on that car. But you must yeah. have a receipt for it. A receipt for buying it, yeah. Yeah, are we able to see that, Bear please? That. Yeah, yeah, no problem. While they wait for Kelly to fetch documentation... Kelly's smart. She know to lock the door and everything, so they just can't walk in. Stuart phones the office to see if the vehicles are free of finance. Someone do HPI for me, please. It's a Fiat. Yeah. It's free, Vic. I've also got Transit as well. OK, brilliant. The vehicles could both be seized and would cover almost half the debt. But Kelly has found a receipt. Right, this car's not sold to you, though, is it? Yeah, it's mine. It's not in your name. It's sold to Greenwood Car yeah, Space. Right, well, let me have this back. Yeah, I need to take a photo of that. <coughs> the sales receipt shows the car was sold to Scott's business. The agents now have all the evidence they need to seize both the van and the car. She's not moving very, you know what I'm saying? She's not thinking it through. <laughs> but Kelly isn't backing down. You can't take that car because you can't prove that it's not mine. Well, we can take it. It's not for us to prove anything. You can't You've take got that. seven no, days. That's mine. Yeah. It's not in your name. What do you actually know? Well, you well, absolutely know nothing. Despite Kelly's protests, they know they're about to clamp your car. <laughs> Stuart goes to clamp the Fiat. You, my friend, are being seized. What's that funny little thing you've put on? I'll get me somewhere and cut that off if you don't get it off the car. Yeah, you'll be arrested in criminal damage. Be arrested? Criminal damage. Well, you shouldn't be on my property. You've no right. I've got the right to be here. Yeah, a... I've just told you he's not here. Yeah? He doesn't live here, so why are you, you still here? You haven't proved me anything. Because you can't prove it. That's why. The agents have now been at the house. Yeah, man. She was working with him at first, but that lie... That little lie she told wasn't enough to make them go away. Now it's turned to frustration. For 20 minutes, there's still no sign he of finna, Scott. He finna pull up. But then Kelly comes to the door again. Just tell me what to do. Right. I'm really not well myself. I appreciate that. He's well, on his way. He's on his way. Well, when, when he comes here, we'll have a chat. It's not, it's not fair this to happen. We have to shut the business because... It's not, it's not for us. We some parties to get some money in for Christmas for the kids. You yeah. know, we've two kids. We've split up because of it all, because of the stress of everything. He's temporarily living at his mum's. We are married. Yeah. But we've had to split because times haven't been really kind to us at the moment, that's all. It's funny how some debtors go through different emotional stages. They might be angry when you get there. They might shout at you or threaten you with violence. Then they'll turn on the... I don't believe the tears. When people go from 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 cooperative to angry to tears, I'm like, all right, nothing's the truth at that point. The tears and hope that you feel sorry for them. They'll tell you they're vulnerable. They won't open the door. People go through so many different emotions to try and, and stop us doing our duty. That's him. 20 minutes later, Scott finally arrives at the house. Do you know what it's about, mate? Uh, well, probably, yeah, but... The outstanding yeah. balance, as you stand now, is £4,651. If we don't collect the outstanding balance in full today, yeah. we will remove goods, including the vehicles uh, outside. I'm not just take all my stock. I've got about £100 grand's worth of stock. Take the fucking lot, I don't care. So if you've got hundred grand's worth of stock, surely you can afford four and a half thousand or whatever that, that outstanding balance is. But you got a hundred grand's worth of stock. Yeah. When the business was running and flowing, and then that's what we left over with. That's all we got yeah. left over when we shut the business down. Because yeah. we slowed down, we had no money, so with the business yeah. shut down. It seems that Scott's business has fallen on hard times. But the agents need to get this case resolved. This is the end of the line. Take the These stop. guys are, are wanting yeah. money. We are here today to resolve this matter, and it's going to go one of two ways. It's payment in full, or we'll have to take control of goods. You need to come back outside. Just give me 10 minutes. We'll be making a phone call. You need to make a phone call. Yeah, I want you to leave you can the make property. A, but we won't be leaving the property. We won't be leaving the property. Leave. No, no, we won't be leaving it. You even leave the property. I'm going to take your fucking head off. 
the family has reached. That's the verbiage I want to hear, although I don't condone it. But that's what that's the type of negativity. Crisis point. With tempers rising, Stuart and Vic will have to get this volatile situation under control before it turns ugly. He said, I'm going to take your head off. Talk to him then. You know what I'm saying? High court. Really right, right. Right. You know, right. There we go. Stuart and Vic immediately try to calm things down. We'll stand by the by the door no, and we'll close that. We don't. We understand. Nothing. We're not yet to cause your aggro. We're yet to resolve it. Yeah. But as the agents step aside to give Kelly time to raise some funds, Stuart spots a key for the Fiat by the front door. Why are you taking key off for? Because we have to go and look at the vehicle to inspect it. I'm not giving you permission. To well, it's, okay. it's been seized. It's all about finding a trigger point with the defendant. It could be various goods, it could be one particular item that they don't want us to take. And uh, it makes people change their mind. And actually... Stuart is so aggravating, ain't he? <laughs> he be doing his job, but he be playing mind games while doing his job because, I mean, that's how he figured is the best way to do his job, but still. Take it seriously when we've taken control of something that they don't want to lose. After talking to his family on the phone, Scott has some promising news. Okay. My brother's gonna see if he can lend me a grand. Yeah. I'll just pay for the job, I've got 700 quid. And my mum could lend me 300 quid, so that's two grand. It won't clear the balance. But Scott's offer of 2,000 pounds isn't enough. The debt is over 4,600. The agents keep the pressure on. The vehicle's still gonna get taken. We try not to remove, but yeah, if that's the last saying. result, then we'll have to do it. What about if I can get all the thousand pounds together? I can give you three. The more you can raise, the better. <laughs> three, come on now. Y'all know three is more than enough to start a payment plan for the other 1600 People that we wouldn't even normally ask. I, I mean, give my long lady, I mean, give everybody. Mm. You can see what sort of family we are. It's, this is completely unsurrected. Yeah. We've never had anything like this before. We've never been involved with anything. The house is packed. Don't really. even know what to do. So Christmas in this house isn't even happening this year because we've just. Yeah. I yeah, tell two children that they're getting no Christmas presents because everything's gone wrong. The agents give Kelly some more time to try and raise another know. thousand pounds. Let's give it to Grandma for you. If she's unsuccessful, she stands to lose what little she has. It's heartbreaking in a way that uh, other family members are dragged into, into a situation, but that's what debt does. Debt follows you around, it drags family members in. They have to get involved to try and resolve the situation. Half an hour later, Kelly's granddad and another family member hey, arrive hey, at the hello, house. Hello, buddy, pulling up. Hello there, sir. Hello. You all right? Yeah. I've had a wave your grandma. <laughs> you can find the time, you know? But I'll have to go and pick her up and fetch her back with We can take payments over the phone if that's easier. Can you? With the help of Kelly's granddad, the couple can pay £3,000 today, with a promise to pay the balance, which has now increased with fees, in a week's time. That's more than enough. And they say they play in a, in a week's time and not even, like, payment plan type situation? But the vehicles will be held as collateral under what's known as a controlled goods agreement if Scott and Kelly don't pay. Stuart phones the office to see if the offer is acceptable to the claimant. If we said three grand today and then a controlled goods agreement for the car and the van, so it's two and a half grand next week. Three grand today, two and a half grand next week. Two and a half grand. Thank you, bye bye. The claimant has accepted the offer. The car stays here. So the car will be on a controlled goods agreement, which means you can still use it. So you'll take three grand today? Today, balance yeah. in seven days. Scott will take three today and leave the car. Leave the the car will stay here. Yeah, that has gone through. Yeah, okay. I'm... With the help of Scott and Kelly's families, the case is resolved for now. W granddad, man. Stick cat one. Stick cat one. I'm a bro. Thanks, granddad. Don't stop communicating with us, all right? Yeah. Because we'll, we'll come back and we'll roof, we'll roof those vehicles. Are we all done? Yeah, we're all done. 
Right, guys, we'll leave you to it. See you later. But if Scott doesn't pay two and a half thousand pounds in seven days, the agents will be back. To take it away. Probably life's hard, isn't it? Especially for any young couple, but. Oh, this wasn't that bad. Bro said he'd take his head off, but it, I mean, after that, you know, we know it was cap, but. I just hope they can get it sorted. See, that'd be my problem, man. I wouldn't be de escalating nothing. I already said this, but bro would have. He would have looked at me and said, I'll take your head off. I might have laughed. I would have. <laughs> my fault. I'm trying to remain professional, but that was funny. Like, see, I'm giving off that type of vibe, and I I'd get fired. That's really the truth. Day one, I'd be fired. Last year, the number of county court judgments issued against individuals in England and Wales rose for the fourth consecutive year. Mm. Their total value reached 1.7 billion pounds marking a 200 million pound rise from the previous year. High Court Enforcement Agents Max Carraher and Steve Pinner are in Plaistow, East London, to recover a debt of just over 2,000 pounds owed to a housing association. We're off to see Mr. Abdi Fatah Ibrahim, and we're looking to collect two thousand one hundred and seventy-two pounds and sixteen pence. And I guess it's that big block there. If debtor Mr. Ibrahim can't or won't pay today, the agents have the right to seize goods to cover the debt. They're going to a tire block. You, you listen. You might be out of there for this one for real. Like this. High court enforcement here to serve a writ. Thank you very much. Ninth floor. Okie dokie. 30. So, ain't nobody. Okay. Hello, sir. Are you Abdi Fatah Ibrahim? No, no. No? Who is that, sir? I don't know. My cousin lives here in the Your cousin lives here. Can yeah. you get your cousin for me, please? He just went to an appointment. Is there? Hello, sir. No, he's not leaving here, sir. Hello. Just Hello. The two men in the flat claim that Mr. Ibrahim doesn't live there, but this is the address on the writ. The agents need. Ain't no heat in there? What's this? A trap house? To find out if they're telling the truth. What I'll need to see is a tenancy agreement of who lives here. Okay, okay it. sir. That's fine. But you leave the door open for huh? me. Just leave the door open. We'll keep the door open. And do you have a warrant for this? We have a high court writ. Can I read it? I, who are you? Huh? I can only show it to Abdi Fatah. The agents are suspicious that either one of them could be the debtor himself. They need to get inside the flat to look for evidence. But the man has other ideas. What are you going to do? Can you please Sorry. move that, please, because you, you might be hindering the door. The door's uh, fine. No, because you move your leg, please. You're not supposed to touch Listen, the property. Sir, we're inside the property. He's We've in. got a writ to be here. No, but you okay. can't put your foot like that. All right, how's that? It's amazing the lengths that people will go to to get out of paying their debts. Some people hide. Some people lie. You shouldn't open the door. If people had nothing to hide, they could... Is there not a peephole where you can look through the peephole? Invite us in so we can see that. We'll be in and out, and then that's the book closed. But the man seems to be increasingly agitated by the agent's presence. Don't don't be touching. Look, you're touching the... Don't touch the property. Listen, yeah, I've got a brick to be in. I feel it. Can I hammer it? Is everything yeah. all right? Is everything all right with you, bruv? I just need some paperwork. All right, move back then. Don't no, be, don't no, be no, touching the not. Sir, OK. Don't miss it. Listen, bruv, don't sir, be touching the property. Sir, listen, we're... Whoa. Don't miss it, mate. Oi, take it easy, man. Oi, listen, listen. We're hiding. We're rumbling. This is the rumbling that I expected. Enforcement. Oh, listen. Oh, hang hang on. on. East London tower block. Answering the door with a jacket on. Somebody else comes to the door with a jacket on. Ain't no heat in there. They're upset. 
They in there freezing. They've been waiting to get into an altercation to warm their blood up. You hear me? Is it force? Gentlemen, stop. 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 Don't be, stop. Don't right. Okay, sir. I'll just get the police here. Okay, get the police. Call the police. As the aggression is escalating, Max calls the police before the situation becomes more violent. Hello, can I have the police, please? Hi, uh, we're High Court Enforcement Agents and we're being obstructed. We need immediate police assistance because it's, it's kicking off. There's going to be an assault here. If somebody tries to push us out of a property or eject us, the reason is usually because they've got something to hide. The police may be responding as quick as they can, but when you're in a volatile situation, a short time can seem like... I'm not going to lie, Max be surprising me. Max don't look like he can handle himself, but... I mean, he was pushing dude and dude wasn't moving. You know what I'm saying? He, he has no muscle behind any of the... the I, at like pushing action but you know he was still standing at 10 toes a lifetime the men are still refusing to let the agents any further into the flat then suddenly a third man appears here he is Hello, sir. We're here with a high okay, okay. if you could all show us your id we can say oh okay this man is this this man isn't this this man is this. that that would work that's simple the person that you're looking for, yeah. it's not complete in here. I assure you that. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, but we need identification and like the cop. <laughs> Real Muslim, I assure you that. Bro, who are you? Be the council tax tenancy agreement. All three men claim that the debtor, Mr. Ibrahim, doesn't live here, but the agents still haven't seen any proof. And Max and Steve have a duty to enforce the writ. What's your name, sir? My name is Shake. Shake. The police are coming. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Don't be Bye. Nobody wants to see us at their house. So there's an immediate problem. Hey, how is he looking at him? Let me go back. Force the writ. What's your name, sir? My name is Shake. Shake. The police are coming. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Don't be Bye. Nobody I feel like he was just looking at him because he was talking. He's like, hey, I'm trying to, like, listen to you, that's all. ...wants to see us at their house. So, there's an immediate problem. We're going into their home, uninvited. And then it's the case of trying to reason with people who are in a, an angry state. Hard to do. 15 minutes after they were called, the police arrive. Hello. Hi, gents. Hello. This this is my cousin's house. They can't be in the house unless they show me a warrant six stating that they that they can come inside the house. What's your name? Sir? That's not true. Forget my name. Could no. you read it and tell me whether they've got the right to be inside this house or not? That's the first question, yeah. They've got a writ. Yeah, this is from an article, okay? You you have to abide by this. No, where yeah. does it the say reason? they've got a warrant to come into the house? Oh, That's what I'm telling you. This paperwork. Calm down. All right. Listen, listen. Forget what they have. They got the right to do what they're doing. That's the first question, yeah. Okay. Then you think about it. Whether they're right or wrong. Okay, that's a nice my job, sir. Right. It's a high court. Listen. Don't okay. tell me nothing. Well, no, listen. I'm dealing with the police. Property, okay? huh? No, you sir. cannot touch me. Right. Listen. They can't do nothing. Can you show to. me they got the right? Oi, who's so wrong? Who's so wrong? Listen. Don't be there. Listen. listen. No, no, no. This is wrong. Somebody finally get to get arrested. You need to tell them to stand still. Right, listen, so you've seen the evidence the saying that they've got the right okay, to do this. Right. I know How are you not doing your job? Okay, listen, yeah. you're a civil servant here. Right. You're assisting the company right, rather right. than assisting okay. me. Right. I pay your wages, not them. Why are you chatting? Could they not? I want to believe you pay taxes in some shape, form, or fashion, but I... I... <sighs> the evidence is stacked against you right now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, can they show you the evidence? Then okay. you talk to me. These guys are here to serve a purpose. Right? How do you know? Oh, no, no, you this don't know. You have to run it. You have to run it. You have to run it. You're not doing your job. You're serving the company. You arrest me. Arrest me for what? Arrest me for what? breaching the peace. Sheikh won't calm down. You are breaching the peace. You're letting company come to my house. So the police are forced to take action. Mate, you've been arrested for a breach of the peace. Show me hands, mate. Bro, I haven't done nothing wrong. All I told you was to check the paperwork. 
that ain't what like he he was trying to. I ain't even gonna lie, shake. You know what I'm saying? Free shake, but dang. They was trying to tell you what the paperwork said. You kept talking. With Shake in handcuffs, the agents can finally begin to search the flat. They for probably won't even take you. Debtor, Mr. Ibrahim lives at the address. Okay. Okay. Well, we're documentation you know of tenants the agreement or anything like that. The flat is in a state of disarray. But in the living room, <coughs> Max makes a discovery. Yeah, there we go, look. So, Amplify and Ibrahim, so letters are going here for me. And that was only the 15th of November. The kitchen is wild. The unopened letter addressed to debtor Mr. Ibrahim was sent only two days ago. Steve takes it to show Shake. So, may I just say one thing? I know you don't want to talk to me. There's a letter here to the man we're looking for, which was posted on the little... Yeah, he's trying to return it. He's been getting letters, that's what it is. But you say he doesn't live here, he didn't live here. He doesn't live here. The letter isn't enough evidence to prove no, that this not. is Mr. Ibrahim's home. And the men are still refusing to tell the agents and the police who they are. But Max and Steve have another problem to contend with. Yeah. At the end of the day, there's insufficient goods for us to, uh, to remove. There's not really much we can, much we can do. With very little. Yeah, man, y'all might as well go home. It's over with. It's over with. To see. Y'all ain't got nothing in here. If evidence that Mr. Ibrahim lives here, the agents decide that they have no alternative but to walk away. I've got some photos. There's insufficient goods. Um, I'm happy with you. Okay. Despite the assault on them, Steve wants to leave on good terms. I'll have a chat with the gentleman in the handcuffs. I don't know how far you want to go with this. Nah, we have no objection to this man just walking away from this. That's fine. OK? We, this is nothing to do between me and you. This is just a job. We're instructed by courts. OK? So do we part in friends? <laughs> you take care. I'll shake your hand, but you're in cuffs. OK? You look after yourself. Shake is released without charge. This job can be yeah, very frustrating at going. times because you have to walk away from a situation. We're only 23 minutes in. That's 20 minutes left. I feel, I feel like they're going to do like two, three more places. Knowing that somebody isn't going to get the money that they're rightfully owed. And that does get to me. We like getting success in the field as does anyone else. Not today. Yeah. Completely unnecessary. Yeah. That could have been done within in a minute. Oh, oh dear. What a day. High court enforcement agents are trained to deal with aggression in a controlled way. But in Stuart and Vic's next case, I don't like you. You're a smug fucking prick. The agents are back to see Scott and Kelly. Is that oh, like... they spun. They came back. Bye for you today. So... Oh, oh wait, we don't want to see that. Okay, dang. dang the leading on. financial institution has shown that nearly 30% of Britons are struggling to pay off their debts. One in five have reported. I don't think this has ever happened. We came back to somebody's house. Reported having trouble sleeping at night due to debt worries, while nearly a sixth. Nah, not me. I could be a million dollars in debt, I'd still sleep like a baby. I could. <laughs> are afraid to answer the door or the phone because of their creditors. Ignore. 21% of people who sought debt advice from a leading financial advisory body have fallen behind on the existing debts. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are on their way back to Rosendale, Lancashire. So, Vic, we're going you... back. We're going back. We're yeah. going back to Scott Greenwood. Broken payment plan. So he's only got himself the blind mate, I'm afraid. Three weeks ago, Scott Greenwood agreed to pay two and a half thousand pounds to settle a debt owed to a shipping company. But he broke his promise. Now the agents are back to get this case resolved for good. Right. Okay, see so you in a sec. See you in a sec. Oh. 
The car they listed for removal if the agreement was broken is parked outside. Is she there? Yeah, she's uh, inside on the phone. If you don't want to come to the door, that's fine, but just ring my mobile. I'll put my card through the door. All right, here you go. What? Right. We are here to remove the vehicle. You can't. It doesn't even belong to me. It's my granddad that's paid for it. The last time the agents were here, Scott's wife, Kelly, produced a receipt for the car, which stated it belonged to the debtor's business. But now she appears to have a receipt to show it belongs to her granddad. Well, this wasn't what we were showing last time. OK. Because I couldn't find that last time to show yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That's proof there. Well, it's, it's, it's not proof now. Yes, it is it's proof. Not, it's not proof. proof. That, I, I could have done that five minutes ago. That wasn't the receipt you showed us last time. OK? So, I like you said... I didn't have that yeah, I told yeah. you that. But well, you showed us the receipt. I didn't show you a receipt in the car. Well, you did last time. Yes, yeah, 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 you did. Okay. Previous okay. So, this, I'm, I'm not... She I'm has not. a terrible poker face. I'm telling you, every time she's lying, it's blatant. She's trying not to, like, make another face. Like, I never showed you a receipt. That's how she looked. Tell them, where's the liar? We're taking this as evidence. We're taking the car now. It's under a control goods agreement. It's not. It is. Well, ring yeah. the police. No problem. They're here to assist us. Of course you can. We're not accepting that as evidence. You could have done that five minutes after we left. Why have I? You can okay. see it's been signed and dated. Yeah, OK. So let's see the bank transaction that was made for that. It wasn't paid. It was paid, it was paid in cash. cash. It was me. Yeah, of course it was paid in cash. OK. Is Scott on his way down? Well, he's on his way. So you'll yeah. have to wait for him to get well, it. I'm not waiting for anyone. Anything. I'm not waiting there for anyone. There's well, your receipt. The police, yeah, ring the police. What are the police going to do? Despite Kelly's protests, the car is already under a controlled goods agreement and can be seized. But Kelly's not backing down. He has no right to sign anything on that vehicle because that vehicle doesn't belong to him. Well, it's the van doesn't belong to him. It was he in a... that to get you out of the house. It, it doesn't belong to him. It's mine. It was in it a name. To my granddad. You signed it though. Once somebody tells a lie, they've then got to remember what they've lied about, and it's us remembering that they've lied to us in the first place. So it's picking apart a puzzle that they've created and they want us to believe. Before the agents take the car away, they decide to wait for Scott to arrive. They hope he will make a payment and get the matter resolved. We're just waiting now. Just waiting. We're going to give it 15 minutes and then uh, we're going to start ringing for recovery for the vehicle to be removed. Yeah, it's Scott now. Ten minutes later, comes. Scott arrives at the house. Hi, Scott. Back again, mate. What's happening with this payment? I can't, I can't pay it, can I? Right, the vehicle will be removed. You can't remove that. Yeah, we can. To me. Uh, we can. We've yeah. seen the receipt for it, mate. We're not going around in circles. We, we need to control of it. Any circles. You try and take okay. the car. Can you try yeah. and take the car. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever's truck you come, I'll just take their fucking truck. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. you will, mate. Yeah, I will. I'm sure you will. Yeah. Okay. I will. Then what Listen, happens? I'm not speaking to you. I want to speak to you. Because I don't like you. You're well, a smug fucking prick. Well, it's your <laughs> choice, mate. It's your choice, mate. So, so I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to remove the vehicle. Okay. All right. No worries. Not my loss. I'll stay warm here, mate. Vic now tries to calm Scott down. Vic is always the peacemaker, no matter what. No matter who what partner he with, he's the good guy. And make the agent's authority clear. You signed a legal document where that vehicle was on, right? Yeah, right. saying that, yes, if you do, do break the, the payment plan, yeah. we can come and take this vehicle. That's what you signed. Right. So. Yeah, well, it's not my car for you today. So yeah, you but can't... that's fine. It will go today. I can guarantee it. We gave you time to yeah, clear the balance. To, to find another fucking two thousand six hundred quid. I don't have enough to do it. So I can't <coughs> find it. You know, I can pay. I can pay like two hundred pound a month. They're not going to accept two hundred pound a month. It's going to take too long to clear it. I don't have anything to pay today. I can <coughs> probably pay hundred quid. That's it. You know, that's all I've got to my name. But a hundred pound payment towards a two and a half thousand pound debt won't be enough for the claimant. Why he get out the Vic car? Vic and Stewart's only option is to call recovery Why Stuart get out the to car? come and get the car. What'll happen is, okay, honestly, <laughs> what'll happen now... If you're taking that car, you're yeah. going to have to take me away because I'll be sat in the car. No, so the yeah. police will remove you. But it's right. It's not looking good, that's all I'm saying. Now, you can you can make threats, but, you know, we're not yet to have... I'm not making any no, threats, I'm saying, anyone. If, if, if the recovery vehicle will come, it will go. If you do, well, then you get arrested, and your power's going to go from that. Bad. We do this every day, Scott. We do this every single day, and we hear that we hear the same thing every yeah. single day. Can I've legally just been take it? The police, you can't yeah. take yeah. it. The, 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 the police know nothing about civil here. law. Well, I'll get my granddad down because he owns yeah. the car. I've given you the receipts. Your granddad paid last time, didn't he? Yeah, 
Yeah. You said nothing about the vehicle when he was your last time. Because he didn't know what was going on, because he was frightened. I had the key. I had the key, and he made no comment about the vehicle at all. He didn't come up just like... He didn't come here for the park. But at the moment, he didn't come up... Take the children. The gentleman just came up straight away. The gentleman came straight away and said, what are you doing with my car? Your granddad didn't say that at the time. That's the reason why I don't believe that that receipt there was made at the time. Because he didn't come up straight away and say, what are you doing with my car? Your granddad didn't say that at the time. That's the reason why I don't believe that that receipt there was made at the time. I know you're only doing your job, I know that. That's fair enough, right? Can I speak for a second? Can you just wait? I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to this gentleman in a minute. Can I please wait? We heard this last time. I'm not speaking to you. Will you just please shut your mouth for more? Well, you I am not speaking to you. Well, at the end of the day, you need to hear some I have my own rights. Yeah, I know you, you have your rights. No, you don't. So this vehicle is sold four months ago. Yeah, it was sold in Yeah, July. and you still haven't got the registration paper back. We haven't got what? The, the registration back. The V5. We haven't yeah. sent it off yet, that's why. Yeah. Right, so have you got oh, it then? Yeah, I have sent it off. Right, yeah. you just told me you didn't. So have you taken it or not? Have we what? You've just said then that you had sent it off, then you said to him that you had... Have a what? Bro, she's a terrible liar. They're not even on the same page if they lie. Have you sent it off? Yeah, all? I have sent yeah. it off. But you just said just then you hadn't, so either or. Look, I'm not going on the circus, right? The vehicle. No, no, that's right. Right. You can argue that. Right. 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 A whole lot of verbal. Let's get the recovery vehicles out here. It don't matter what they say. Unless they pan, they finna get it taken away. At the end of the day, whatever you throw at us, we'll take it. Because at some point, you're going to overstep the mark and your lies are going to backfire. Because that's the difficult thing about lying, is really to stick to the story. The yeah, she's probably top two worst liar on this show I've ever seen. 100%. The agents have been trying to reason with Scott and Kelly for a quarter of an hour. But then Kelly drops a bombshell. A quarter of an hour? Just say 15 minutes. Do you know I've been thrown out? Yeah, I've got 10 days to be out. Yeah, she was thrown out. We were two kids. I've got 10 days to get out. We're trying to find you another house. Because all these fucking gobshite neighbours on here, because it's such a posh, snobby area, and we're not as posh as them. They've all complained to my landlord who owns my house. No, and now they've thrown me out. So now I'm homeless with two children before Christmas with no money. Well, ma'am, you have two children. You're in a vulnerable state. What you could do is you can go down to the council once you throw, get thrown out, and they can emergency house you until they find accommodations for you. Scott, you out of here. We don't know what you... I mean, uh, this is his name. What's his name? Yeah, you out of there, buddy. Because last time you came, I gave you everything I had. You I gave you everything I had. I have nothing. I have nothing. And if you take a He's of trying to today. work his hardest to try and earn a bit of money to put together for Christmas. We're trying here. Can you please just work with us and try and do something? Why didn't y'all call? If y'all knew y'all wasn't even going to be able to get that little money, y'all should have called, though. Please, I'm begging you. I've lost everything. I've no house. I've no nothing for my children. No, I don't even have a fridge freezer. Come Imagine on. somebody telling you to shut up. To shut your mouth while I'm talking and then trying to plead with you. I'm petty. So it's, it's nah, nah. My mouth is shut and so are my ears. <laughs> Cry me a river. Let's get the recovery trucks in. Let's try and beg and borrow money now. It's, uh, it's heartbreaking in a way once you see what people get themselves into through no fault of their own sometimes. But we've just got to try and execute the rate in the most professional way as possible. It's clear that the family has hit rock bottom. So he's talking to Stuart crazy, you know what I'm saying? And then he be one on the phone trying to get everything to resolve, so to give y'all a break. It's like, it happens all the time, man. Stuart calls the office with an update. She's been evicted in 10 days from this address. It depends whether we want to take the car or call it quits or we go into a payment plan of like 200 quid a month. It will be up to the claimant to decide whether to throw the family a lifeline. I'm literally just waiting for the office to phone back because if they do say approved to remove, then it's the claimant's choice. A few minutes later, the office calls with a decision. Hello. Oh yeah, go on. Go on. Yeah, yeah. So what's what what what's under under today? Two hundred pound a month. Let's go. Do it inside. They're not going to be able to pay this again. I don't believe. Claimants have accepted Scott's offer of a hundred pounds today 
and a payment plan to settle the balance. I'll remove the... I think they'd just be trying to get up out of there, though. The, the collection of people. Plump Vic. Thank you. Have you got cash? Got cash, yeah. The car is safe for now. I need you to sign this, Scott. Once again, print name there. Yeah. And sign there for me, please. Yeah. So you're very lucky. I'll be honest with you. Don't break this because this is... You're not going to get another opportunity. No. All right. Bye-bye. All the best, mate. Yes. Scott must now stick to his new plan of £200 a month. It's if not he doesn't, happen. there'll be no more second chances. The claimant had a change of heart. They got a lifeline today. You know, it's just it's unheard of, to be honest with you. Uh, it's going to take a year to cure it. Obviously, we wanted it paid in full, but you can't take blood from a stone. I'm afraid not even me and Stuart. No. Right, stop chatting and let's go. You they got the results. I mean, uh, they're gonna have to close the rest of this case, man. It's over with. Latest government figures reveal that evictions from rented properties across England and Wales have risen by nearly 45% since 2009. Last year, over 300 repossession orders were granted to landlords every day, and more than 130,000 renters in England were at risk of eviction. No, I'm not going to read this. You can read it. Only read the ones that are behind me, invisible. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Ben Pinner are in North London to carry out an eviction. We're in the fair borough of Tottenham. The first job we've got to go to is repossession. The tenants, Mohamed Rashouk and his nephew, Victor Rashouk, owe over £7,000 in rent arrears. What's the, what's the rent? 25 High Road. I'm guessing this is High Road. Yeah. This looks more like it. But the agents aren't here to collect the money. Their job is to evict the tenants oh, today. Oh, okay. We've come to all the nice places. This is possibly one of the nicest we've been to. The tenants occupy a bedsit in a large shared house. House gone to the dogs. Just in case the bell doesn't work. <laughs> Nobody appears to be in. But then the landlord's agent arrives. But he doesn't have a key. So can we break the door? Yeah, break it. If you give me the authority. Can you shake the door for me? Can we what? Shake the door for me, please. When we're doing an eviction and they're not answering and they've obviously come to the mindset that we'll just go away, that's really not the case. We're going to be coming through that door, whether you like it or not, one way or the other. As Ben and Paul finally gain entry, Ginger, another agent who acts for the landlord, arrives. Hello, Ginger. That's his real name? Oh, Have we seen him before? He looked familiar. Are you sure it's this one now? There's no answer, so Ginger decides to break down the door. The tenants appear to be in after all, but the agents are in for a shock. What's the shock? Why didn't you open the door? No speaking. Well, well you're deaf. Well, you're deaf. Yeah. A simple eviction has suddenly turned into a complex situation. It will really got that yamaka on, but he going to hell. You can kick down the deaf people, though. Damn, they can't hear you. Relax. How would they? That's a fire hat. Some that's some type of hazard. Take all of the agent's experience to handle this case sensitively.
High Court Enforcement Agents Paul Bowhill and Ben. This is crazy. Whoa. But a simple repossession. Thumbnail. <laughs> Go back a little bit. Let me see. Two thousand pounds. But a simple repossession. Oh. Got it. Quickly turned into a complex case. Why didn't you open the door? Oh, oh. Not speaking. For your death. Did they ask to be funny and he said yes? In all seriousness? Now the agents must help Mohammed, who is profoundly deaf, and his nephew Victor, who speaks little English, understand what they need to So wait, to is Victor deaf? Do next. Do you sign? I sign. My name? Ben. Ben. E. E. Ben. N. N. Yeah. Because Mohammed signs in Spanish, Ben's efforts to communicate with him fail. So he tries to talk to him. Signs in Spanish? Sign language got different, like... Okay. Nephew, Victor. Oh, do you speak? Yes. Okay. Is there any, any lights in here? No, 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 no. We're here to evict you. That's from the property. You have to leave the premises today. You have. We have a high court risk. Because you've been evicted. No one told me. You would have had lots of letters. Every job that we go into has potential for... Your uncle just looking oblivious. He don't know what's going on. A wide range of... Of probabilities. So if somebody is vulnerable, we'll pick it up in the first 30 seconds. On this occasion, it was a very difficult situation. The man we wanted to talk to couldn't hear us, and even if he could, he couldn't understand us. I mean, you couldn't make that sort of story up. No. Despite the communication difficulties, the agents persevere. You need to pack enough things for today and tomorrow. So you can then arrange to come back when you've found somewhere to live and collect the rest of the stuff. Okay. I thought sign language is... <laughs> there a Spanish sign language? I, maybe when you're spelling something, but like... I thought, okay. I, I, yeah, they gave okay. With Victor acting as an interpreter, Mohammed appears to understand that he has to leave the bedsit. But then he hands Paul a document. This is a housing benefit which is current. So housing benefit is being paid. The letter shows that the tenants have been receiving housing benefit, but the amount hasn't covered the full rent. Victor claims he's unaware of this shortfall, which has led to the £7,000 worth of arrears. So wait, no no letter? Yeah, but that's why they've, you've been evicted. Evicted? Yeah. For no reason. For, for that reason. But haven't been told that. You would, I need 21 days. Whatever the rights or wrongs of the situation, the men need to leave today. That's tough. Pack a bag. And I'll be out here. Okay? Yeah. Oh. That's a... But because of Mohammed's disability, crazy... he's concerned for his welfare. It's a crazy situation. You know, we either turn them out in the street and leave them wandering, or we have to do the right thing. Fair do, isn't it? He decides to call the council to see whether they can give the tenants immediate help in finding a bed for the night. Your call is being transferred to one of our advisors. Please hold. Doubtful. Once I got into the flat, um, my attitude towards the tenant changed dramatically. I then realised that he needed help. He was still going to be evicted, but I decided at that moment that whatever we could do to we make it easy do. for him, we would do. My name is Paul Bowhill. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent, and we're just carrying out an eviction. Uh, it's a little bit of a difficult situation. Talk to the him. guy we're evicting is profoundly deaf, and profoundly. he can't speak. Apart, so apart from being Spanish, I was actually seeking advice. I mean, we can bring him into the council office. Right. What I can do is I can book him for two years, and that means he needs to go to 48 Station Road with all, all his documents, and then we'll see what they can do. Help him. Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. The men have a possible lifeline. I'll take you to the council when you're ready. 
in this particular case, I felt really sorry for the guy. I didn't want to leave him on the street. Yeah, I genuinely believe he don't know what's going on. But he is just, you know what I'm saying? Feet, not speaking any reasonable English, to find his way to the council to explain his predicament. Yeah, yeah, that's a good guy. At least go with him to explain what's going on. They'll understand. Victor and Mohammed's time in the house is up. <coughs> Paul and Ben arrange to meet them down at the emergency housing office. They really met him, huh? Closed. Oh, it's open. Okay. How can I help? These two young gentlemen here yeah. have been evicted from the house. The guy. Here okay. is a deaf mute. Oh. We've just come here to explain why he's here. I mean, you can leave them with us and we can... That's fine. Them. Well, I appreciate you coming in with them. I just wanted to make sure they were delivered. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'll right, leave them in your you. capable hands. Thank you, Paul. Be you. lucky. Paul, you I know, often did the right thing. ...people that we've evicted. I do, on many occasions, track them down, if you like, to find out if their life has changed. And I do genuinely feel for them. I can't deal with all of the problems that they have, and I don't think that the society that we live in is adequately dealing with their problems anyway. Paul and Ben have done all they can. It's now up to the council to help Victor and Mohammed find a bed for the night. Oh yeah, by the way, can we get 150 likes on this video, man? Just 150. I gotta remember, I need to start asking y'all, hit the like button, 150, man. My birthday just passed. From now on, every video I'm asking. Of course he didn't. We knew that. Go take, go take, just go take it. Closed, figured. Oh, uh, that's all the info we get. Dang. 150 likes, please. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the